as much as I can try to keep this video short is not gonna be possible because it's way too much stuff happening today so much stuff to update you on and uh, so yeah brace yourself the VR uh, conversions VR5, VR6 conversions they they were finished but we had a couple of hiccups with the uh, two engine mounts uh, specific with the laser component now everything has arrived including that beauty over there give me a second um, so and I put them on I'm gonna show you everything in a minute everything is absolutely spot on and trust me what I'm saying is spot on is 100% spot on I leave no room for imperfections and uh, this is why it takes long but uh, once this production is rolling, I don't want to put any more changes because I want everything to be as good as this is possible. And uh, although I did apologize so many times for being late, but also this is the price to pay for having like top quality stuff. You know, this workshop may not look like top quality uh, because I'm busy making stuff, not tidy up, not cleaning up. You hear me so many times moaning about it. I want this to be pristine, but it's not gonna happen anything anytime soon. We're gonna get rid of a couple of cars. I'm gonna sell my race car, you know, and then we're gonna tidy up and bring this workshop to the state it was before. But again, this is not a video about how clean or not the workshop is. This is about the geometry and the real supreme on the MR2. Besides, obviously, the others that I'm gonna show you at the end of the video. So, when we produced this this prototype, um, we had a lot of comments. Uh, in my opinion, this is a piece of art. It's absolutely stunning. And when I say, from my perspective, from mechanical engineering perspective of view, the beauty comes natural as a byproduct from being designed in the right way. You know this. This design is, is this way to not have any torsional um, flexibility, to say this way, for the suspensions and also for the rear engine mount, which is very, very important. Um, some people, even on the forums, when they do K20 swaps, they know that you have to have all four engine mounts because the rear subframe, if you don't have the front mount, he likes to actually twist because they are very fragile. Besides the fact they, you know, they, they rust badly and they very thin, made of, you know, very thin material. They just not up to the date. So it, it is very, it's a shame really that MR2, a Toyota design, such a beautiful chassis with such a good geometry, you know, it handles probably the, one of the best handling cars ever made. Uh, but the real Supreme is so fragile. But that leaves us, um, that leaves us the room for improvement. However, there were a couple of people saying that, oh, it's a shame because there is another company who makes these subframes and they have adjustable height of the rear arms. Means these ones here, you have another slot, so you can put them higher. Well, that will sort of create a problem, a little bit of a problem because if this has to be much higher, the, the main structure will have to be much thinner. And we're relying on the main structure to be uh, solid, not to flex. Now, although you can improve... Sorry for that. So, although you can improve the original Supreme even with a thinner structure, main structure, but that's... That's not the way we do this stuff. Once we do something, once you design something, you either do it the proper way, the good way, or you don't do it at all. Now, besides the issue with the structure not being as strong as it should be, with more adjustments over here, because there is down ways to do it, there are complicated ways to do it, but there are ways to do it. Mm. However, why would you do it? Now, I mentioned this before. Um, sorry for the mess everywhere. I mentioned this before in a previous video when I presented this, the prototype of the subframe and announced that soon we're gonna have the final product available for order. And yes, we do have them already for pre-order. So yes, you can order them already. And I'm gonna show you that in a minute. Well, maybe more than a minute. So people, I've, I've seen this, uh, I need to be, 
politically correct. I need to be nice, and this is difficult. Uh, I struggle with this. Steve is in a much better position. <laughs> right. If you change the geometry on the real subframe, <sighs> okay, let's start from the from different point of view. All right. Snap OST. Snap OST and MR2 used to be a thing on the forums, right? For people who had no idea how to how to drive them, you know, is it rear-wheel drive car? It spins on a weight or whatever. Oh, it's not me. It's a Snap OST. No such a thing. Few months been passed. We shown the stuff. Other people shown it's like, oh yeah, Snap OST doesn't exist. It was a myth. Well, it was a myth for a long time. But what happens is that. Um, You've been told, or people have been told, that Snap OST exists, is a real thing, or it's not you, you know, it's a car. Come on, don't you know this? Everyone knows this. What happens? From one person to another person, to 10 people on the forum, 30 people on the forum, and then you bring something up, and they say, oh, it's an OST, is a Snap OST. What's Snap OST? Oh, come on, everyone knows this. You're the only one who doesn't know this. You want to be left, you want to be left behind. You're the one who doesn't know. And obviously, if you don't actually know, you don't want to be left behind. You say, well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, Snap OST. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it is the thing. So it's not me not be able to drive the car running out of talent is the actual thing. Is the problem with the chassis, the problem with the handling, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's Snap OST. There you go. This is a receipt for a false common knowledge. And this happens very often, especially on the forums these days. The internet these days is so full of misinformation. Everyone knows this. And yet, and yet, people rely on it for some reason. It, it bothers me. How about we start studying again as we used to do back in the day? Anyways, from Snap OST, now recently I've seen this thing that is called um, Ureo uh, Bump Steel. The Bump Steel is on the front. It could occur on the back, yes, I agree. But uh, I was like, Bump OST? Uh, bump Steel? No bump over steer, excuse me, bump steer. Bump steer is something that when you hit a bump on the road, you will change the toe. So it goes steers left and right, because how you steer the rear is you back, the rear of the car steers, because you toe on the back wheels moves left and right when you hit the bump, so you have um, your suspension movement quite, quite drastic and it moves left and right and drags your car, you know, steers the back of your car. It's like, okay, that is a very difficult, Excuse me, very difficult thing to occur. Uh, some of the cars, they have active steering on the back. They steer on the back. Nissan ZX 300s, uh, Nissan Skylines. You know, I think some of the Silvias had it. This might be wrong. Anyway, some of the cars, they have it. More than cars, they still have it. Some of them, the electronic control, some of them active, some of them active just mechanically. So when you compress the suspensions, the toe goes in or out a little bit. It gives you a hand to go around the corners better. Um, some of them work better, some of them work worse, whatever. However, MR2 Mark III, we're talking Spider, uh, MRS. I had this car for a long time, Steve had this car. And uh, when I heard about this phantom problem, um, I started doing my research, I started talking with people um, from US because the biggest, I guess the biggest, the most uh, of the racing in it seems to be happening over there. So it's like, okay, I want to talk to people with the most knowledge, most data accumulated. So what about this Ureo bump steer? No such a thing. And if there is, mm, I'm not aware. This is usually the answer I had from people. And observing the, all the conversations about something like this has been brought up maybe a couple of times, usually from people who used to drive the older chassis in the Mark II, because they were slightly different. Well, actually, they were completely different. So maybe they were worried about this fact, and then all the people who raised the Mark II said, no, no such a thing. I didn't occur anything like this. Steve didn't. The people I talked to didn't. It was like, okay, where this is come from? this comes from? I don't know if you pay attention. <laughs> if you do pay attention, you notice this in politics, that people very often create a problem only so they can actually sell you a solution to a problem 
that didn't exist in the first place that you were not aware to have and uh, you agree on mainly because you have no idea so i'm not the expert i don't know they say there is a problem there i just don't know but assume there is because you know they the specialists they talking like they know what they're talking about so you agree and you're gonna do uh, a solution where well, you're gonna purchase a solution for a problem that didn't exist in the first place this happens all over the place in history and every politics and, and it works so i suspected this was the exactly the same issue that there wasn't a problem someone created it to show you a solution or to give your hand to show something because a well-known problem a common knowledge and again common knowledge yeah we've seen that before um so i say i don't know there could be an issue that i'm not aware of such a small issue that i never felt it these people never felt it but i cannot guarantee that there isn't i mean issue issue is there when people are aware of and they have problems is this is the issue if there is a, some bump still problem or you toe changes with your geometry when your suspension compresses not necessarily is a problem because it may be designed this way like we said before if it was a problem people were reporting a problem if people not reporting no other issues even people who raise these cars with the crazy mad horsepower k20 turbos most commonly used v6s v6s turbos twin turbos lots of rubber on 285s 295s 300 on the back a lot of downfalls and then they really put the chassis under stress and yet they don't report this problem so i was like okay this is i need to dig into this because i don't like to rely on other people's opinion and I don't like to rely on my opinion. Means, I approach everything from a, a scientific point of view. My opinion, no matter how good it could be, or could sounds like to me, is only just an opinion and will remain to be just an opinion until I prove it wrong or right. Right? Period. Done. However, when I when I heard about this uh, bumpster, my face was like my daughter's. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this is my daughter's face when she was young. Now this was my face when I heard that because like I know this stuff. It's like, listen, I've been, I, you know, it's not good to say I've been doing this, I've been doing that, I got years of experience. People claim they used to work with Formula One, you know, teams when, yes, they did. What they did, they used to clean the floor. They're not lying. So I don't like to bring this up. However, I've been doing this job for many years. I've been racing motorcycles. I still racing motorcycles. I've raced cars. I still got my race license. Um, I, I know how to feel the geometry. I used to build the cars, you know, the race cars, the roll cages, the geometry, the suspensions, and all the stuff. Really fucked with the geometry. Done so many mistakes. Learn about them from them. I used to set the, the cars, the geometry for people, you know, on the racetrack. I think I know a little about what I'm talking about. So it's okay. However, we like facts. So. I say, let's find out if this um, bump still actually exists. There are many ways to check it. Um, you have to simulate your suspension travel, and then you have to check if your toe moves in and out, because that will cause the problem, the phantom problem. But, um, so okay, there are many ways to do it, and uh, probably you can do it with the laser uh, like alignment, you know, check it lower your car, upper your car, whatever, move your suspension and see if that something changes. But the best way to do it, in my opinion, is the old school way, which is actually um, still used in the modern days by professionals, by a string. Strings is optical, is mechanical, there's nothing to lie. There are no devices to rely on, so because stuff can go wrong. The more complicated stuff, the more stuff to go wrong. But also, I wanted to replicate something that you can do it. 
anyone can do it. Anyone can check it for yourself because I don't like to rely on opinions. I don't like to rely even on my own opinion. I need facts. I don't want to trust people, but mainly I don't want you to trust me because that's going to be wrong. I never ask anyone to trust me. You, I prefer to educate you, to show you the fact, to show you the math, to show you the data, make your own mind. Do not trust, do trust no fucker in the internet, including myself. So, what's it called here? I don't know. I done it the way that I think anyone can do it in their home. In their home. I'll show you. <laughs> It's very simple. Two strings, two pendulums, which I have one. The other one is just a spark plug. But you got to be careful. You have to put a string right in the middle of it. Otherwise, it won't be true. I'm going to explain later on. So let me explain exactly what I did and how you can reproduce it yourself to check if there is actually a problem with the uh, real bumpsty on MR2 or not. And then we're going to explain how the geometry works what should you do to improve it, what you should definitely not do to try to improve it because you're going to make it worse. Well, first of all, you obviously you put the hub on. This is the one we remove. You see the shaft is not there because we cut them. This is part of the conversion. And obviously, we're not going to use these hubs because they were rusty. Um, so you take your shock absorber, you remove your spring because you want this on. This is a part of your suspension geometry, but you want to remove the spring because you have to be able to move your hub up and down because this is what we're simulating, you know, to see if there is a problem. You put all your arms, don't have to be mega tight, but there's no movement, you know. This, the adjustment in the middle, it doesn't really matter, but just to be neutral. The front arm, and that's it. So. This is a piece of precision aluminium. Doesn't have to be precise. I'll show you why. It doesn't matter. I drew two holes in there. Hold on, there's all these people. There you go. I could drill two holes so I can bolt it with the nuts that hold obviously the wheels. So it's nice and solid. There's another bolt here that goes through these spare holes over there. And this is very dodgy way, but this is, is, is a very good, actually this bolt is from suspension from the coil of it. It's a very good way to actually stop the herb from moving up and down, well, rotating. Also, you got to make sure there is no, um, there is no play in your wheel bearings because there is a play, your readings, your data is not gonna be accurate. So once you make sure that uh, this, everything is fine. You set this gauge, let's call this one a gauge, nice and true, yeah? It has to be true. This is very important. I'll show you later on why. Then you get two strings, like I said. There you go. One here and one there. Why strings? Because we have to check. So if this, this is very long because we only, this gauge is going to simulate the angle of our toe. The longer this gauge is, the more accurate the reading we have. We could just put the wheel here and see if the wheel moves. Hold on. You can just have a wheel here, but obviously having this extended, the, 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 it's going to be more precise. There's more, there's a bigger level of accuracy. So what this is going to do, if we have a problem, when we're going to move the suspension up, if you see in the now, it's pretty much slightly lower than usually is when you, when you're driving the car, you know, these cars, they, they're all centered, it is what it is on them. So let's say we are driving the car, this is your toe. When you hit the bump on the road, your suspension is going to travel up. This will have to change the angle corresponding to the car. So you tow left or right, in or out, whatever you want to say, it's going to change if there is a problem. So you have to have something fixed to the car and have obviously in correspondence to this gauge to say. So it could be one here. It could be one there, like a pillars. They have to be straight, they have to be parallel. But then the problem is when the, when the hub travels up and down, it doesn't, all, it doesn't just travel up and down straight. It moves in and out of the car. And also, there is a, also there's another factor, which is your camber. 
The camber is active on the cast, more or less. Even on this, there is an active camber. So there are more angles um, in movement than you that you that you're measuring when you compress your suspensions. So it's not very practical to get something you know um, fixed on a chassis, or it's very difficult to make. This is a solution because strings are driven by gravity. You can't cheat. You can, you can, you know, it's, it's, it's always true, no matter what you do. However, when you're going to raise your suspension, I'm going to do it now. Look what happens. You see? So what's happening there, I'm increasing, if you can see that, you can see that. So this is the string, which is completely true. And the herb is slightly on the angle, so we increase the camber a little. So what we add that we added the camber also because the hub, the center of movement of the hub is here, but the suspension is offset, so it moves slightly on the angle. There are many, many angles, uh, live angles that this um, this hub moves on. So when you have to have a true, true reading, this is not acceptable. And I know people will make this mistake. You really have to, so in my case, I have to lose this bolt, bring this true down, you know, so this is gonna be where it should be. Nice and level, quite a big difference if you see. And then you take another measurements. Obviously you can see I've done them already, blah, blah, blah. You have to lower your strings. You have to, you know, get a pendulum to stop swinging around. And, uh, but this is how you do it. It's very simple, anyone can do it, anyone. Now, if you can see these arms when they go up now, you see, the front arm is almost up, but it's pretty much more straight than up. So what happens? I wanna, I wanna explain one very important thing. Let's say we have your subframe attachment point or the chassis attachment point, which is this. Let's say this one is one of these, or one of these, doesn't matter, one of these arms. All right, and then we're gonna have another point. Let me check what the camera sees. Another point here. Okay, this one is either two of these, either this or this, doesn't matter for me. You have your suspension arms, right? There you go. When the suspension, so you wanna, you compress the suspension, you think you, you have, and so this is your hub, I'm not gonna draw it because it's gonna be messy. Go travels up, when travels up, goes up, right? Well, wrong. Because, if you can see, these arms, they don't travel in a straight line. They travel in a, in a circular line. So this is gonna be roughly something like that around here. Obviously, this is not precise. It's just a method to, to instruct you to show you how it works. So when we're gonna go up, for example, I don't know, 100 mil, 50 mil, this is gonna be here, this is gonna be your arm. And the problem is, this is the up and down movement, vertical movement, and this is your horizontal movement. So this difference here is dictated by the travel your arm uh, down, up and down, and how much you actually moved left and right, in this case, out of the car or inside the car. So now, this traveled up, is on the angle, it went more inside the car. So this always goes left and right, left and right. This one goes left and right, left and right. And you have to understand you have this free third link, which is diagonal. Being diagonal is that the arm goes kind of, you can see it, I don't know if you can imagine, in this direction. So this doesn't go up and down, it goes up that way and down this way. Now, the angles of these, between this and these arms, are different, as you can see. These are not straight anymore. They go, let me just put the camera straight. You see, they're facing up. Excuse me. This arm is pretty much vertical. Uh, sorry, horizontal, bollocks. <laughs> horizontal, you know what I mean, it's straight. Why? Well, the Toyota engineers, they're not stupid. They have proper simulations. The multi-link geometry on the suspension is very complicated. But the beauty of it, you can achieve exactly, exactly what you want. Like I say, active camber, 
active toe to give a hand around the corners and other stuff. Anything is possible because it's multi-link. In this case, it's three links. Actually, the fourth one is, is you shock up so, but that's, it's a different movement because it's linear. Um, so everything is dictated by these movements. And as you can see, they're not all the same. So they decided to move in correspondence to those arms, this arm, this is gonna be the longest, the furthest away from the car in this position, then when it's gonna be here. Here, it's gonna be short, because obviously that arm is gonna go down, it's gonna go closer to his mounting point here. There you go, it's gonna be roughly here, so he's gonna bring the hip forward a little bit. Moving all of that, obviously you move all of this because they work together. So, shorter arm, like I said before, if this is your lower arm, let's say you have that side arm, the, the, the one you're pointing forward is shorter, all right? So we want to go up to here, okay? But the arm doesn't move this way. It moves this way. So it's going to be roughly here. So see how much distance we traveled here. Now, they could have this arm much longer, much shorter, whatever. It is this length, same as this arm at, that, at this length, because they work together. All right. When they work together, they achieve a movement of the hub they are designed to achieve. Period. Now, to answer your question, if there is a bump still, there isn't. Well, maybe. These are two lines. These are measured them. The red one, actually, let me lower it. I got to be careful so when this goes down I don't touch with my pendulums this is my preferred pendulum which is actually very good because Iridium Spapog is actually nice because he has I obviously snapped the outer road um, it's a very pointy on the bottom as you can see there so it's quite precise it's funny but it's precise anyways the red line is with the, comp with the suspension fully unloaded so you you ride in height. The blue line is with the suspension fully compressed, so pretty much on your bump stop. That is a lot of travel. Now, obviously the hub moves in and out because we explain why, because of the arm, circular movement, blah, blah. But these two lines represent your toe. Do you see any difference here? I don't. It looks pretty same to me. Now, you can speculate this is a very crude way of measuring this stuff. It could be, but it's true. Because you can't lie to, the, to, to gravity. You can't lie to strings. You can't lie to, to the spirit level. I mean, this is very simple. When it's simplicity, there is very, very low amount of probability of error. Because it's simple. There's not many factors in, uh, in a way. If this was laser, it's like, yeah, is it calibrated, is it not? If it was more complicated, yeah, but you measure this and that. No, if you know what you're doing, just make sure you measure only one angle at a time, which is tall. Do not combine your toe with your camber. This is what I'm saying. This always has to be level because when it goes up, it doesn't go up because it goes up at the angle of your camber. So it goes up, but that way. So the longer the spirit is, you're going to change this. It goes up and down, goes kind of diagonal. So that measurement or that reading is going to be false. So this is very important. So don't trust me because, hey, I could have those lines, you know, <laughs> draw them because I want to show you something I want to show. Don't trust me. Do it yourself. Do it yourself, you know. To me, this is the point. Now... I say, because I draw them with a marker pen, you know, I had my spirits, I had my levels and all the stuff. The, 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 the amount of precision is speculative, if you want to put it this way. I could be more precise, of course. So let's give it, I don't know, a millimeter, two millimeters of error, maybe, maybe, but still, that's nothing. So. In my eyes, I actually see these two 
they could be slightly tighter than these two. Maybe there could be a millimeter or half a millimeter of, of difference. But again, that could be because my measurement is not, you know, 100% accurate. Or maybe there is a bit of a difference. And if there is that much of a difference, then what are we even talking about? <laughs> it's like, are we getting ridiculous? Second thing, like I explained, I hope you already understand this. You cannot change the angle of these two arms and not changing this one because they are in close relation to each other. They work together. Thinking that you can change something, improve, first of all, improve something by changing just the angle of two arms and leaving that one there is ludicrous. It's completely madness. This is not how it works. You know, if you want to change something, you have to redesign it. And it's a very complicated job. These people, they're not, they're not stupid. They've done a pretty good job. Now, why people do it? People do it because of the roll center, pretty much. Because when you lower these cans, what happens? Let me, I will try to keep the camera here and pump it up. So you lower the car and this is what happens. You go on your almost perfect roll center, you're gonna pass your roll center, and the car is gonna uh, lose the grip and traction mid corner. This is not good. You should never go that way. It should be slightly lower. Now, somewhere there, all right? Roughly. Now, to correct the roll center, yes, if you move these arms, these power points higher, this, you're gonna increase the angle of this, so you have more margin of lowering the car and having your roll center corrected. And I agree with you 100%, but the problem is, this is not your whole geometry. If we could move this arm higher, as much as we could move this, so we take the whole geometry, the whole thing up without changing anything, I agree with you. Great, you're gonna lower the the the, the, um, um, the center of gravity of the car. You're gonna lower the car. It's gonna handle better in the circuit. Blah blah, and you're not gonna break the geometry. It's gonna be great. However, you have to do it exactly the same on the front, because the front is as important as the back. This is not about the traction. This is about the grip in the corner. So if you're not able to do it on the front. No matter how good you'll be able to do on the back, do not do it one on another. It has to be done all around. But besides that, you cannot do it this way. Now, is there a solution to this? Absolutely, yes. Uh, again, it's not because, you know, it's, it's not my ego, but this is... In, I mean, come on. I've been designing, well, designing, working with the race cars, building race cars, geometry, suspensions, and roll cages, and chassis for a long, long time. Of course, we have the solution for this. But the solution for this is not as simple as drilling a couple of more holes here and fuck up completed the geometry. That's not the solution. The solution is to don't touch the geometry, set it up in the correct position, and move your hubs higher so we are in the process right now of designing all four race use you can see it this way hubs um, we have to figure out how much lower we want them and uh, and then we're gonna finish the design so that is your proper solution if you want to go cheap do it but do not do it with the drum and don't do it with your chassis I mean even saying that the MR2 doesn't handle okay is madness this is one of the best hunting cars ever made so please please let's let's not create problems where they don't exist just to offer a solution to the problem that never existed in the first place and playing with people's stupidity why not stupidity ignorance in a good way in ignorance they don't know what they're talking about because they just don't know these cars are that good if you're trying to do research and if you want to seek opinions of people Go and speak with people who actually raise these cars, who actually put the chassis and the geometries and all the stuff at their limits. I've seen many times people 
you know, bought the kids and lowering this and Ross sent the correction this and all stuff, a lot of companies. And they struggle. The more adjustment you put on, the more you struggle. Uh, not always, sometimes it works, but majority of the, of the cases, I've seen people just removing everything, go back to standard, you know, set the geometry the way it's supposed to be and just leave it this way. And then you see the lap times going down and you see people starting to, to, to handle the car the way it should be, you know, because it, it is how it is. Now, this is the reason why this um, prototype did not have any adjustments because I would have to compromise the structural strength of the subframe and I want it to be as strong as this is possible. Some people say it is over engineered. You're absolutely right. This is too good. This is way better than you, than you want. This is way better than, than we need. Is it a bad thing? I don't think so. Um, and also, like I said, no need because, well, I've been just explaining that for about an hour. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is the final product. I haven't even assembled it. <laughs> assembled it with a zip tie, it's just to show you. I'm sorry for this, but today it was very, very long. Um, it is pretty much perfect. There's one thing that <laughs> is funny, actually. I don't know if you can see, let me check the camera. It's bloody upside down, come on. <laughs> Anyways, I might even leave it this way because it's funny. Now we're gonna correct it. Um, but yeah, this is the new subframe. Uh, it's not welded up. I'm sorry, I wish I can show you now how is it when it's welded up because it's gonna be beautiful with all the welds, you know, um, being stainless. You know, when you weld stainless, it's just nice. I mean, I showed you before, it looks all like this, you know, so it's, yeah, it's good. And um, also, I don't know if you can see it, but you know, the way we design the structure of this is, is honestly, I can just tag weld this stuff and it's going to be strong enough because this structure does not rely on welds to be solid, to be strong. It relies on the structure itself. It, it, it interlocks each other like a capuzzo. It's been a long time. It's been well, quite a lot of work, many prototypes, many tests. Um, to be at this point, it took us a very long time, but we are here. If you can see this part here, I actually left it empty. You can see, so I can show you. And this part here has reinforcements inside. Even here, everywhere, it's like a bridge. This is, no, there's no torsional um, flexibility on this. The beauty of this also is that this central part, so the height of this, the length of this, the, the, the shape of this, where the engine mount goes, and also where the gearbox is. So the, all the clearance here, this is actually a little bit more than the standard one. I'm going to show you on this VR. Uh, you see, obviously this looks completely different, but you have that, is, you have that space in the front, and uh, you have obviously the mounts, we have the adapter here from the old VR system. So all of that is exactly the same as the original one, which means that if you have um, Honda K20, K24 swap, which I think they have the mounts from here or from here. I can't remember exactly. It's like a C-shape. Actually, I had one. I don't remember how it was built to grab the gearbox. Everything fits. If you have your V6, whatever engine you have uh, in Yamaha 2, and it fits with the original Supreme, this will fit as well. Just bear in mind that our VR5 DSG gearbox, I'm sorry there's not enough light here, or VR5 and 6 manual 6 speed gearbox, oh, oh, Steve, close it. Well, bollocks, you can see it from inside there. 1.8 manual and DSG gearbox. They all fit with the standard subframes. You don't have to get a subframe from us. The subframe is completely independent from all of these engine swaps. This is just an upgrade because these subframes, they look like they are. This is probably one of the best ones we have. You know, but uh, they were asked badly with the light. I don't know. I showed you in the previous video. Mine looks good, but it's actually 
has a big hole uh, under the suffering from the rust. Plus, they are not solid. The part in between is flexible. When you have, obviously, the whole car pushing on your wheel in the mid corner, especially when you're going in a circuit, there's a lot of faults. This, with this, is a pivot point. If this is not strong enough, this will flex. And I'm pretty sure this flexes quite a lot. So with that, you remove all the flex completely, like this, there is none. And again, imagine if you have to put from here, like not a slot, which has to be, again, pretty accurate measurement as a finger, one hair and one hair, how much does it leave me for the structure? You know, this, what, 50 mil or whatever it is, and it has to go all the way here. And remember, the strongest, the chain is only as strong as the weakest link. So even if here is bigger, the main structure is very small, that's not very good. It's not very huge improvement. So this is one of the reasons we don't want to do it because at some point we said, do you know what? I don't want to do this. I don't want to explain to everyone why you shouldn't touch that geometry, why you should touch the geometry in a proper way, not this way because you're just going to break the car. This is going to do more damage than good. Instead, just make everyone happy. At the end of the day, this is a business. Fuck it. Let's, let's, let's put another three slots. Let's make everyone happy and be done with it. Because, you know, give people what they want. If they don't know, who cares? You know, the most important thing is just to sell. The more, the more we sell, the better it is. And um, I have to be honest, it was, it was a, a deep thought. And, and I thought, yeah, yeah, maybe we should do that. And uh, a week passed and was like, I cannot do it. I'm sorry, I can't do it. It's, we do this job, and I've been doing this job for way over 25 years, and I've been driven by passion. I love the geometry, I love the mechanics, I love the engineering, and I will not do, I will not go down to compromises just to sell two or three more of my products. Who cares? You know, if you don't want it, don't want it. I, I'm not gonna compromise, you know, what I'm believing in just to add another couple of, you know, salts. Don't care. I'd rather explain. And like I say, don't trust me, trust yourself. This is very simple method of checking. Do it yourself, make your mind and choose the product you want. You know, we do the best we, we think is. And the way we're thinking, like I can say, is not just thinking, it's not just opinions. We had to prove it to ourselves. We tested, we prove it. We test it again, we prove it again. We're trying to find, this is not a thing. Even with the mounts, even with the suffering. We build the product, we test it, we test it. Is it good? Yes. Is it good now? Yes. Test it again, is it good? Yes. All right. Is there a better way to make it? Yes. Fuck me. Okay, let's do it again. Maybe there's no better way. Only when we think there's no better way to do it, only when, once we have all the tests, we're 100% happy with everything, then we go ahead and do the stuff. And this is partially the reason, I apologize so many, so many times for people waiting for this stuff, especially if you are, didn't arrive, because, I'll show you now, I need, I need a light, because without the light, you're not gonna be able to see it, and I'm not gonna be happy. Um, crap. <laughs> so much stuff is happening. And we, we got the cover as well. Um, you've seen the videos probably, oh, there's, there's a light. So, the two last months we were waiting for are here. This is the last month, and everything fits exactly as it should be. There's a bit of adjustment because they fit slightly different between manual and DSG, but everything is spot on. So all the buttons go in, everything as it should be, perfect. So we have the suspension mounts, So we have the gearbox mount, that mount over there. Again, these are the suspension mounts. So they decide what the engine says, blah, blah, they hide everything. We have the front mount. And as the result, there is a, a rear mount, this one here. This was the, the last one we designed. Now, on the 1.8, what we do, 
we use the original um, Toyota gearbox support. With the VR engines, we are not able, well, we could do it, but it'll be kind of forcing this stuff. And I don't want it to force it because the rubbers on site, inside the engine mounts and the gearbox mounts, front and back, all of them really, they are quite flexible. You see, they, they hollow inside. And when you add such a powerful engine, a lot of torque, you're gonna have a lot of engine twist. Twist, call it this way. And <clears throat> if you have plenty of grip, you don't want your engine to flex this way, forth and back, clocking uh, movement, because that's going to result in your wheel hop. When you have a lot of wheel hop, um, um, this results in this, because again, it's rubber, rubber on your, on your, obviously on your tires and rubber on your mounts. In between, what's in between is your transmission, your gearbox, your CV joints and your drive shafts. Usually, this is how you break the drive shafts. Now, because we have motorsport grade only, we don't produce cheap drive shaft, only motorsport grade drive shaft. People who made them for drag racing, rallies, and all that stuff, uh, they most likely not gonna break. So, what you could break the next is the least, um, the, the leakest link, probably something in a gearbox or something like this. So, you know, to avoid that, engine mounts that's supposed to be upgraded. Standard engine doesn't have enough power to make that movement, but this fucker, <laughs> absolutely yes. You know, uh, so I want you to be able to put um, poly bushes. And in order to have poly bushes front and back, this fitment has to be precise. Because if this is rubber, I can just pull a little, come on, I can push a little bit. Bit of imprecision, it'll be fine. You know, you push it because it will give up and it goes in. But once you have, pretty hard material inside, it's not gonna give up. So what you want is the result of one, two, three mounts, and the result comes to the fourth. It's like mathematics. Everything adds up. All bolt on, all bolt on. This is your result. Not pushing anything, look, with my fingers. And trust me, this bolt is precise. This is no bullshit, all right? Okay, it doesn't go all the way through because it's a bit short, you know? There you go. This is the precision you want because this shows me that even if I have poly bushes, everything is spot on and precise. And uh, this is the reason I'm not gonna apologize for the 15th time. Uh, but yes, I'm sorry you were waiting. You were waiting because there was a reason. This is the reason you're paying for the quality and uh, well, really, we're paying for the quality because this has been a long, long road. Every day, past two months, it was two years, really, over two years now. The past two months were very hectic, but this is it. We got everything now. So the all 1.8 stuff is complete. One point, uh, I wanna show you something else. Oh, fuck it, all right. Once we're here, I'll show you this, it doesn't matter anymore, I can lower this because uh, I need to lower the car to show you the next, this next part. Come on, get out. <laughs> You're gonna leave that on? Ah, fuck it, why not? This is another product, another thing that everyone waiting for was waiting for. Uh, the thing is, I make stuff for myself, and then I just put it in production. So all the products that you're gonna see is exactly the stuff that I want for my own car. Right. This is the removable bulkhead. As you can see, the missing the side. The side is already made. I have them on because all of this was built on my frog and, and I'm transferring this. I put this carpet, which is different shape than this. This is black, this is gray, but it doesn't matter. I really wanted to show you the, the, the shape because when I left it um, just aluminum, there was too much reflection. You couldn't actually see the shape, but this is how it looks like. Not screws, but we're gonna have the quick disconnect like you have on the race motorcycles as a, as a findings, like a, those, those, whatever they call it, like a quarter of a turn and it clips in all over the place. So you can remove this section only 
or this section and this section or this section only and also I want to do like a window here so you have your uh, oil filler and check your oil level without removing all of this stuff and also like you know already roll cage fits and this is slightly lower than the original plastic cover so you soft up fits now actually on this one we can put the crossbar here with the plastics with a little bit of a glass when you soft up everything fits so this is not in contact with anything all you're losing is a bit of a storage compartment but what you're gaining on the other hand is much more than what you're losing come on let's be honest about this, this is vr6 turbo uh, i don't know if i reconnected everything back together but actually let's check it this is going to be nice to finish the video if this fucker starts i don't remember if i connected everything we're gonna find out soon yes we did way to finish the video i guess so it's been long but you can see we covered a lot of stuff you know and uh, that's it and again please don't trust no one including myself do your own research make your own mind and even if you have an opinion please remember your opinion is only worth as much as the next person's opinion it's just an opinion without backing it with facts it's just an opinion opinions can change facts do not especially with the mechanics, with the engineer. The stuff is hard, you cannot lie. Everything is there, evidence is there. Go and find it yourself. Um, if you don't want to find it, you have to rely on opinions. Uh, at least, you know. Don't get fooled by people who are able to write down a lot of pages of technical words, because if I'm going to the doctor, I don't know what he's talking about. He's using all the technical words I have no idea about. So to me, he sounds like a competitive person. He sounds like someone who knows his stuff. And this happens everywhere. In the motorsport industry, this is highly amplified. Um, I've seen this for over 20 years. It's not something good. So, you know, it is what it is. I think this is it. Um, so yeah, months are all finished. Subframe now is ready to pre-order. Oh, Subframe, Subframe, you were asking if we could put something on the pre-order. Yes, you can pre-order them. I don't know how many we've decided because now we know how much everything is costing. Assemble, assembling one of those, trust me, I'm very handy with the stuff. That's a long day just to weld it up. It's not easy. It's an awesome product, but it's not a five minutes job. There's no MIG welding, there's nothing. It's purely take or stainless, it's just beautiful. It's a piece of art, but it takes time to build it up. So the costs to us, they're not very little. You can't have a little cost when a product is so such a good high, high quality. So nevertheless, um, for, the, for the launch of the subframes, I don't know how many we're going to have, at least 10 because we promised them already to some people. So then I think maybe not even enough because more than half of them already gone uh, the moment this video goes up uh, because we promised them. So I think we may even increase the number, but I said we gonna sell them at the pre-sale. So, sorry for the complicated words, at 850 pounds plus shipping. Uh, I think that's, that's very low. That's very low for what it is. It's gonna be much higher. This is, it, it, we, you can't keep that price so low because I get bankrupt, you know. I want this product to be on the, on the market. I want this product to be, you know, to be used for people because I want you to feel the advantage and sorting the problem out from the rusty, rusty soup frame forever. This is lifetime warranty. This is never gonna go, never gonna, well, if you bend that thing, show me the pictures of what you did because it's not possible. 
uh, unless you have a very nasty crush, it will never ever rust. Stainless steel is guaranteed, well, the lifespan is supposed to be 200 years. So I think that's enough for you. Um, and yeah, that's it. So we're gonna finish a couple of things now. We, there's a couple of um, spaces to put on. Uh, uh, again, everything is working out. It's just now pre-orders. Stuff arrives next week, and we're going to be back on the assembly line. Well, I'm going to be back on the assembly line, including the engine mounts now. <sighs> Jesus. Right. So, yeah, soup frames, 850 pounds. We have at least 10 of them. Half of that, over half of that is already probably gone, because, again, we promised to people we may as well increase that number. I we'll have to speak with Steve. We have to check the finances because, trust me, it's like it's that's that's too low to sell them for that price. Uh, we will not be able to. But maybe we can increase the number to twenty. I don't know. We got to speak with Steve and uh, again see where the finances are, and then we we'll see. All the rest is ready to 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 order. On the VR, uh, I'm increasing obviously. So. Someone asked from America if we can build the whole system and send it to him and how comprehensive it is in compared to 1.8. The 1.8 obviously is all completed. The VR, as I'm going forward, I'm doing more and more stuff. They're going to be available to buy and just bolt it on and make it simple. For example, the water system, the cooling system, I'm using all the original stuff. So the original pipes, no modifying, no cutting anything. I can't show you because that's already... Let's get the engine cover on, but it's already done on that engine. The R5 is identical. So there is a two stainless pipes. They connect uh, that pipe to this pipe, this pipe to this pipe, and that one to the matrix heater, and there's another blanking pipe. So the whole is going to be as a kit. So slowly you're going to have the cooling system. We have already the... Uh, fuel system is exactly the same as a 1.8, it's just different lengths of pipes. The charge cooler system is identical to 1.8, but we don't have the pipes that connect the charge cooler to your plenum or the charge cooler to your turbo, because these engines don't come turbo, we turbo them. If you turbo them, it's very likely you're going to have a different turbo system, so your turbo is going to be in a different place, therefore that pipe that's going to link my turbo to my charge cooler is going to be useless to you and same for the plenum you know so if you want us to build the whole thing you will have to send me your plenum or we build your plenum or we make a deal or whatever and literally i have to have your plenum or the plenum you're planning to use and your turbo system to finish the product otherwise it's very simple you know you can have the charge cooler with the mount and everything and do these boost pipes on your own Cooling system again is coming along. Then we're gonna have well, fuel system is already uh, ready to, to, to be ordered. We have obviously engine mounts for VR5, VR6, DSG, DQ250, um, G version, the early ones. F is possible, but there are a couple of things that you have to modify. Uh, and all the manuals. So two engines with two gearboxes. No matter which one, what combination, everything is there. We have the drive shafts, engine mounts. Now, obviously, the engine cover is coming apart. Charge cooler, fuel lines, cooling system is coming apart. It's, it's work in progress. All right. I hope this wasn't too boring. And uh, I think it's time for me to go home. Enough. It was a, it was a long day. Uh, and let's finish with this beautiful image of my lovely daughter <laughs> obviously she doesn't look like this anymore this was when she was a kid ah, she's not a kid anymore but uh, yeah <sighs> see you soon beautiful absolutely beautiful